Okay, let's start lying on our backs today, please. So just come down and get really comfortable. Ah, relax arms at your sides, knees bent up. Just have a little shuffle, reposition the hips so that the lower back feels good. You might have, a, have your feet a little bit wider so that your knees can tent together. Uh, a little shuffle around the shoulders, get a sense of opening up across the chest and the collarbones. Think about the position of your head, so whether your chin is tipped down a little. We want to free up around the throat without compressing the back of the neck. So maybe even just wriggle side to side a few times and then let yourself relax in. And from here, we'll just focus on our breath, just for a few long breaths. Drawing deeply in, right down into the belly, let it be soft. And long breaths out, feeling yourself relax into the ground. That sense of heaviness, that sense of letting go, whatever that is for you today. Let your arms feel heavy, hands are loose and open. Spreading toes. Notice if you're gripping around the inner thighs or the groin or your quads or the butt. Just let everything relax down. Staying as we are, just for a few more breaths here. Arriving in this space. Letting go of everything around you, everything from before and still to come. So even if there are noises in the background, any kind of distractions around you, just know that you don't need to have a completely quiet place to practice from. It's really about trying to find that sense of peace and calmness and ease within so that we can arrive in this space and let go of everything around us rather than forcibly trying to shut everything else out. Okay, let's just start to bring in a little bit of movement. So turning your head over to one side. And then coming over to the other side. Come to the first side again and take it a bit further. Just feel it out. And again. See if one side feels different. Maybe one ear reaches closer to the ground. We'll do it one more time on each side. And again. And then this time, just keeping your head in a neutral position, we'll lower knees over to one side. So you can keep your feet touching the ground. And over to the other side, so no force, yeah, no strain, just let the knees come to as far as they want to go. So they may not make it all the way down. The same to mobilize through the spine and the hips. And think about breathing out each time you lower. So can we synchronize the movement with our breath? So we're breathing in as we come through center and we're breathing out to lower. Breathing in through center and out to lower. And then settling into a neutral position. Just have a bit of a wriggle again so that you're feeling comfortable. Bring one knee up towards you, grab hold with both hands and just spread the toes and circle the ankle around one way and the other. Or maybe you want to flex up and down.
Okay, and then keeping your hips level on the ground, just gonna open the knee, open the knee to one side. So make sure that you're keeping the hips level so that we're not rolling off it. So you can support it with the hand just starting to mobilize around the pelvis. Notice where you're feeling a bit tight. Also notice how far the knee naturally comes out with how the femur extends out of the pelvis. Notice that angle, that's your natural range of movement. And then we'll pass the knee to the other hand. It may not come very far depending on how tight you feel here. So again, we want to keep both sides of the pelvis level on the ground, maybe even use the fingers of your hand to help. The fingers of your hand, <laughs> like there are any others. So just gently moving the knee across. You can kind of choose your own intensity here. Just breathe into it. Notice if something else is tensing up in the body. And then from a neutral position, grab hold with both hands and then lift your chest up towards your thighs. So we're bringing nose to knee, curling up small. If you don't want to lift all the way up, you could just stay down and just gently pull the knee in towards you. So you could always modify however you need. Just go with what feels right to you today. Honor your body. slowly lower back down and come to the other side so knee comes in towards you just have to feel it out so notice if you're feeling different on this side so you might be feeling it in a different place maybe you've got a, a kind of different uh, resistance in this pose I know I do I feel it more in the groin on one side than the other so we're not really designed to be perfectly symmetrical, so notice the differences from one side to the other. And that can come about just from your natural makeup or from your habits, the things that, you know, we favor one leg often, maybe sit a bit crooked or cross our legs, all of these things can create imbalances and asymmetry. Let's come open, so knee out to the side, Prop the elbow if you need, check in with the hips, make sure they're square. See how this side feels, if it's a bit tighter or more mobile, maybe. And you might find there's a little bit of muscular tension in the abdominals to help support your pose. So we're not completely relaxing here. Just generating a little bit of useful tension in the body. And then coming over to the other side, so pass it to the other hand. So you might be just around the midline of your body, or maybe you can come further, but let's just check that we're not rolling off that hip, just keeping them square on the ground. And then from a neutral position, holding with both hands, and if it feels good to you today, lifting chest towards your thigh, <clears throat> bringing the leg in close to you. Make sure you're not lifting the pelvis off the ground, so we want to keep that anchored. Stay for another breath. And then we'll lie back down. This time bring both knees up and we'll grab hold of the first knee again and send the other leg out long. So it could float just off the ground, maybe it's close to the ground, or you might be keeping your knee bent just depending on where you're at today. Or you might be lifting off, so hugging your knee up towards you and lifting your chest towards your thigh. So you choose your own intensity here and we're just going to switch from one side to the other. So make sure that you're not straining your neck. It's really important. We want to think about lifting from the center of the chest. So we're actually lifting the torso rather than just pulling the head up. 
and of course you could be lying down or bringing your feet to the floor. Let's bring in the breath, so breathe in as you switch and breathe out as you hug the leg close to you and then you can start to move at the pace of your breath. So you want to create that tension in the abdominals. So we're not gripping on hard, we're just creating just enough tension to support our pose. Let's just do a few more to each side. Okay, and then we'll make this one the last one. And then roll back down. And this time bring your knees directly above the hips. Now to make this a little bit easier, you could have the knees closer towards you. Otherwise, have them stacked or even a little bit further away, but make sure that you're not arching through the spine. So we're pressing the lower back into the ground, still maintaining that tension that we created earlier. Arms out wide and anchoring the shoulders to the ground. You're going to rotate, so lowering knees halfway to one side without lifting the shoulders. Coming up through centre and lower halfway to the other side. We want to move with the breath again, so breathing in through centre and breathing out each time we lower. So you can feel it out for yourself, see how far you want to take it. It might be a very small movement or you might be inching a little bit lower. And again, the knees can be up close towards you if it feels like there's any strain in your body or you might be moving them a bit further away. Let's just do one more on each side. Breath in through centre, breath out to lower. Okay, and then coming back through centre, and let's make our way up to, well, actually all the way over onto hands and knees, so you can roll over or you can sit up first. And coming into our tabletop pose, plant down into the hands. Hopefully you can still feel that tension that we created in the abdominals and it's going to help to support your pose. So we want to maintain that feeling of strength around the core of the body. Planting down into the hands, draw shoulders away from your ears. Make sure you're not dropping the head, so keep a nice line. Almost like imagine that you're still lying on the ground and creating that same long line down the back line of the body. All right, tucking toes under, we're coming to a little hover. So we're bringing the knees just off the ground without changing our posture through the torso. Keep your shoulders stacked over your wrists so the weight is a little further forward. And then bring the knees down as low as they'll go without touching. So you might be a little bit shaky here, which is fine. Okay, it's all about building strength. Press down into every finger. Press down into the knuckles, all of them. Feel that strength around the shoulders and hold for one more breath. So make sure you're breathing. Then send your hips up and back. And let's pedal on the spot in our downward facing dog. Okay, so we're still strong in the hands and we're sending the hips high. So visualize that same long line from the back of the head to the shoulder blades to the back of the hips. Still a little bit of tension in the abdominals. Just lowering one heel towards the ground at a time. The heel doesn't have to touch. Okay, we're just creating some length up the backs of the legs. And then reset so the heels are level. And then bend your knees deeply, rise high through the heels so that you're pressing firmly into the big toes. So lifting your heels as high as you can and pressing your belly towards your thighs. Then float forward to a plank, shoulders over wrists. Pushing back, belly towards thighs, deep knee bend, high on your toes. Coming forward to your plank, just going to do this one more time. So pushing back, focus on creating that same long line as you come forward, tension in the belly. 
and then back and this time we'll walk feet up to hands and come into our forward fold so stack feet under hips bend your knees a lot to start with just let your body drape down and hang here you might even like to hold on to your arms so creating a little bit of tra traction through the spine and create some movement and just swaying from side to side let yourself feel really heavy through the upper body you might even play with lengthening up through one leg and bending the other knee rocking forward into the balls of the feet and rocking back into your heels Then let the arms hang loose. Bring your hands up to your shins and lift halfway up for a flat back extension. And keep your weight quite far forward into the balls of the feet. So we're focusing on stacking the hips directly above the feet. And then bend your knees deeply, bring hands up to your thighs. You want to create that same line from the tailbone out to the crown of the head then sweep your arms up so without bending in the middle still pulling in through the belly this time we'll drop back into the heels and then come all the way up to standing reach up high and then bend your knees and dive into your forward fold again coming halfway up so you can have hands on your thighs or your shins straightening the arms weight comes forward sit hips back and down arms reach up drop in extend high and melt your way down we're going to do this little sequence two more times if you don't want to fold all the way forward then you could just stay halfway so if you feel dizzy coming into forward fold keep your head higher than your hips halfway lift Let's see if we can bring the weight even further forward so there might be a bit of tension creeping into the backs of the legs you might be feeling a stretch there and then dropping back sweep arms up strong arms so make them as straight as you can hips lower towards heels drive down into your heels to rise with your out breath release back down and we've just got one more round lift and lengthen sit back and down arms up let's drop a little bit deeper and this time we're going to stay standing stretch up tall and bring hands down your center let's readjust to being upright so just still got the feet under hips close your eyes if you want to as so you just kind of reset your body feel the alignment here so we still want to have just that little wee bit of tension in the belly so that we're not dropping forward through the ribs shoulders are broad Lifting through the crown of the head. Easy breaths. Okay, let arms drop at your sides. Let's step it out. So step and sweep. If you've got a bit of space and you can swing your arms, but do check what's around you first. <laughs> Feels good to really let the arms swing out wide if you can. If not, just keep it small. All right, so we've still got feet under hips, a little bit of softness in the knees to help stabilize. We'll start with the right leg, arms sweep up and the knee lifts. Okay, so we're keeping the hips level, still drawing in through the belly, stay strong here. Now tipping forward and send the leg back. Touch toes down. 
and lift on up to your lunge. Okay, just hold it right here. Shifting forward, back leg lifts. Knee comes up and touch down. Coming to the other side, so left knee lifts. Hold for another breath. Just see how wobbly you are today. Now diving forward and extend the leg behind you. In the standing knee, step down. Sweep arms high. Hold for another breath here. Let's reverse out of it. So coming forward, lifting off. Knee comes up and step down. Let's release the arms now and come to the first side again. So right knee lifts and dive. Step down, lift the arms high. Now drop the back knee to the ground. Release the foot and open the arms wide. Now make sure that you're still pulling in through the belly so that we're not making a banana with the back. Stay strong here. You might want to lift up your eye gaze, but it feels good. Sweeping arms wide. And then we're reversing out of it, so arms come high. Tuck the back toes under. So you can always have your hands to your thigh if the arms get tired or if you're losing your balance. Coming forward, lift the back leg. You choose how high. Knee lifts and touch down. Coming to the other side, so left knee up, dive, step down. So reset your lunge, drop the back knee to the ground, release the foot, push down into the foot. So really feel your torso lengthen here, arms open wide. And then reversing out of it, so tuck the back toes under. Shifting forward. Back knee lifts, knee comes through. And touch down, and then just step it out. Let's loosen up the arms, they're probably a little bit tired by now. All right, stepping feet under hips. Right knee again, lifts up. Now keeping your hips perfectly level and still, open your knee out to the side and float arms wide. So remembering from when you're on the ground, your natural turnout. So it's probably not gonna be completely 90 degrees. Bring the leg behind, sweep arms down and just ahead of you. Just keep the arms soft, knee lifts and step down, come to the other side. So left knee lifts. So make sure that you're not hitching up one hip. We want to keep both hip points facing forward and level with the ground. Opening the knee out to the side, float arms wide. Leg comes behind, arms sweep down and just ahead of you. So we want a little bend in the standing knee just to help stabilize, we're not on a stiff standing leg. Sweeping arms up and touch down. First side again, so knee lifts. Open, so let's smooth it all out now. Down and forward, reaching arms ahead of you. Come through and down. And one more time to the other side. So we're moving with control. Let the body be responsive to keep your balance. Open, down and back. Sweeping up and touch down. Let's loosen up. And take big swings if you want to or if you are able to. Okay, and then stepping feet under hips again. 
Stretch your arms up high. Really lengthen here, lift your ribs away from hips. And dive into a forward fold. Step your right foot back into a long lunge. Drop the back knee down, release the foot. Plant your right hand and open the left arm. So think about opening across the chest so we're not just yanking the arm back, we want to be creating one long line from the bottom arm across the chest and all the way up to fingertips. Okay, now tucking the back toes under, lift the back knee off. So if you wanted to, you can just stay with her back knee down, go with what feels right to you today. If you want to follow me, let's see if we can lift off that bottom hand and bring it over the thigh. Keep the back leg really strong and pull your arm back. Hold for another breath. And release out of it. Fingertips just ahead of you and step into your forward fold. Lift hips high, drape your body down. Just hang out for a bit, maybe sway from side to side. And then this time we'll send the left leg back a long way. Drop the back knee down, plant the left hand and send the right arm high. Tucking the back toes under, so optional. Lift off the back knee. Keep driving down into the front heel. So you could stay here if you wanted to, or you can lift the bottom hand off and bring it over the thigh and pull your right arm back. So make that back leg super strong. Hold and breathe. Okay, and bring the hands to the floor, stepping into your forward fold. Straight the body down, hold on to your elbows if you like. Sway from side to side, straightening one leg, bending the other. Okay, and then scoop one leg under. Come and take a seat. All right, sitting up tall, let's, let's see if we can maintain that same lovely long line up to the crown of the head. Doesn't matter which way you go, because we always do both. Bring one hand to the opposite knee, other hand comes behind. Keep spiraling upwards and rotate, floating your eye gaze behind you. So if you feel like you're falling backwards a little, you can plant the back hand for a bit more support. Otherwise, just keep the fingertips light on the ground. Also notice if the other knee, the opposite knee, is creeping up towards you if you're feeling really tight through the hips. See if you can let it drop down, keep lifting the chest out. Keeping the hand on the opposite knee, float the back arm up and curve across for a side stretch. So keep anchoring onto the hips so that we're not lifting off. And also make sure that you're not curving backwards. So we're still maintaining that lovely long line from the tailbone, curving up to the crown of the head. Releasing out really slowly. And let's switch the legs over because we often have one dominant leg that is always crossed in front. Other, uh, other side now, so the opposite hand comes across to the knee, both fingertips behind, lift your chest proud, lift to the crown of the head and gently rotate. So remember if you need to, you can bring some weight into that back hand or you can just try and prop the fingers lightly. See if you can find that place where there's ease and calmness in your body 
with just the right amount of resistance. So that we're not forcing or talking the body into a position it doesn't want to go to. So really listen and honor your body. But we're also not so completely relaxed that we're having no effect and not getting any benefits from the pose. So you just want to find that perfect balance of effort and ease. Adding on our side stretch, so keep the hand on the opposite knee and the back hand comes up and over. Think about creating space between the rib cage and the pelvis. So really trying to lift and lengthen here at the same time as anchoring through the pelvis. And then releasing out gently, come and lie all the way down onto your back. And if you don't want to do this from your back, you could be doing similar stretches from a seated position. So always modify rather than making yourself do something that you don't feel really comfortable with. Lifting one leg high. I'm going with my right leg first, if you tend to forget what leg you're on. So we're just sending the leg up, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. But think about pushing upwards through the heel, at the same time as anchoring the back of the hips into the ground. So we're not lifting off, we want to create a, a really active pose with two different forces of energy in opposite directions. And you can just loosely hold behind the leg without any force or strain. It doesn't take much to get into an active stretch, especially if you are driving into the ground and up towards the ceiling. Now keeping your hips level, so you might even use the left hand to anchor the hips in place. Flip the leg open to the side just see where it gets to, it might be around 45 degrees, maybe a little higher or a little lower. So the goal is not about trying to get it on the ground, okay, the goal is to find where, your, where the resistance is in your body. So notice when you get to that point where it feels really tight through the inner thigh or the groin area, keeping the pelvis level and then we'll start to use gravity and a slightly active leg to help intensify the stretch. So you can keep a bit of weight in the hand for support. And of course we can't be completely relaxed here because then we'll just end up going with the leg. So we want to keep that little bit of tension in the body to keep the pose active and keep yourself stable. And then we'll pass the, the leg to the other hand. So we're coming up through center. And again, you might be around about the midline of your body. You might be just past it or further, but focus on anchoring that hip to the ground. So keep that connection there, keep driving it down. We're still pushing down into the floor. And then think about pressing the outer edge of your foot up towards the ceiling. So you might get a stretch around the outer edge of the leg. And then coming to a neutral position again and remembering that the leg doesn't have to be completely straight. So you can stay here or you could extend that bottom leg or you can come with me and lift your chest towards your leg, so nose to knee. And the other leg might be just hovering, it might be on the ground, it might be bent, so just make it your own. Check in with your neck, make sure there's no strain. Focus on moving the center of your chest up to your thigh. Holding for another breath. 
and release out slowly. Let's do it all again on the other side. So leg up, as bent or as straight as you like. Pushing heel up and hip down. Let your breath flow with ease. Find that perfect balance between effort and ease. There's a little bit of tension, but no strain. Let's go out to the side, so prop the elbow in such a way that you can help support the leg. Keeping the pose fairly active, keeping the pelvis level. So there's a bit of work to be done here, but we're getting ourselves into a position where we can breathe easily, where the body can remain rested, but we've still got this active stretch happening. Pass the leg to the opposite hand, choose how far you want to take it, make it a little more active, flexing the foot, and again if it feels too intense you could relax the foot a bit more. Another breath here. And then returning to a neutral position, choose where you want to go. You could stay, you could extend the leg, or you could lift off. Always notice that something doesn't quite feel right. There's no need to work into any strain or push yourself any further than, than you need to. You can still get a really effective stretch without feeling any pain or real discomfort. And of course, make sure you can breathe with ease. One more breath here. And then lower back down. Bring your knees up. Bend them or bend the knees and bring them up towards you, arms out at your sides, and let's just rock from side to side, so lowering part way over and to the other side. If you prefer, you could do it with your feet down, so it's a gentler twist here, lowering knees over to each side. You might even want to extend the top leg, see how that feels. Just a couple more times to each side. And then we'll settle into a comfortable position just for the last few minutes. Maybe feet together, knees wide, if it feels good to your hips and lower back arms anywhere that they're comfortable, maybe down a bit lower at your sides. You could come to the position that we started in with the knees bent up, that's um, more supportive for the lower spine and the back of the hips. And of course you could be in a seated position if you prefer. Just a couple of minutes here, a chance to rest and recover. Holding on to this internal awareness. But still taking in your surroundings, any noises you can hear in the distance, anything that is a little bit distracting, just notice that it's there without being consumed by it. There's no need to create perfect conditions 
for our practice. Our practice is all about creating that sense of ease and restfulness within ourselves no matter what environment we're in. Otherwise it would just be too easy. So we're observing with our senses everything in the distance, but we're holding on to this internal focus, feeling our body, feeling the connection with everything we're touching, sensing the breath moving in your body, sensing the sound of your breath. There is a lot to observe here. start to come alive again coming back into the day bring in a small amount of movement in a way that feels good to you and begin to stretch and lengthen again energizing your body curl up small again knees come up towards the chest Finally making your way back up into a seated position. Cross legs or whatever feels best. Sit tall, but also slightly relaxed. We've got that little wee bit of tension in the abdominals to help support our posture. But at the same time, there's space to breathe, freedom of breath. And I'll finish with one last breath together, floating arms high with the in-breath, stretching up tall, connect at the top and with your out-breath come down your centre, landing at your heart space. And thank you so much for sharing your time with me. Lovely to have you.